Hey guys, what's up? I'm so glad that you're watching this video with me. I can't wait to hear what Carlos has to say. Don't forget, small group, 7 p.m. Hope you enjoy. Come to the end
I've been living homeless in abandoned homes for uh, about four years. I came from poverty. I was able to get a college degree, work in the professional world. You know, I had goals of achieving success in corporate America, but I carried a lifetime of mental and physical abuse from my childhood. I suffered from anxiety, neurosis, depression, being alone, carrying all this on your shoulders without having insight. It forced me really into a mental, a mental breakdown. The darkest moments of homelessness is the sense of, of helplessness. Not being able to take a bath or shower or shave, but you just feel like I can't make it and you just wanna to give up. Love Beyond Walls has helped me tremendously make me an active part of society. Love Beyond Walls has gone through the process of helping me get identification, uh, tracking down my birth certificate. They've helped me with clothing and a place to shower. They've given me a, a temporary place to stay. They've been a, a major part of me transitioning out of homelessness. You need help from others to get you out of homelessness because you can't just do it by yourself. It's going to take helping hands along the way. Last week we started a series on justice and we started by looking at what superheroes do. And one of the things that superheroes do is they go out and they help people. They help the people in front of them. And we just saw that video about Mark and Mark was dealt a bad hand in life. There was a lot of things that happened to his life that were either by accident or by choice. But there was a guy in Terrence that stepped up and helped Mark, but not only just helped him by, by helping him for that day, but transform Mark's life because of it. And I, I think that's very key for us to understand that, you know what, Terrence didn't save the whole world, but he made a huge difference in one person's life. And so when we talk about being a superhero and bringing about justice in the world around us, Let's take a look at Terrence and how he was able to make a difference in that one person's life. As of course, we're in church and we're looking at scripture and we're looking at the, the biggest example of someone that is able to save everyone, and that's Jesus. And you look at what Jesus did on the cross, he provided salvation for the whole world, but he, was, he also gave us different aspects of life and different things that we can model ourselves after that can make a difference in the lives of people around us. In John 13, we hear a story about Jesus getting to the point of, getting close to the point of going to the cross. And as they're prepping for this, there's one specific thing that Jesus does that just, just is so radical back then and it's so radical now. Before the meal, Jesus got together with the disciples and what he did was, was strange because it, was, it wasn't strange by the actions, but it was strange because he was doing it himself. So what Jesus does is he takes a bowl of water and a towel and he goes to all his disciples and he washes their feet. 2020, that sounds like a strange thing. Back then it was a customary thing for people who traveled when they got to someone's house for their feet to be washed, but it was always done by a servant. It was always done by the hired help. It was never done by a leader or a prominent person in society. But that's what Jesus did here. He got down and he washed his disciples' feet. And it was an act of service. It was an act of, um, of just humility for himself, but also putting the people in his life and helping them out. This was something that, again, uh, the, the disciples traveled with open-toed shoes wherever they went. It was dirt roads. So you have to understand their feet were dirty. Their feet were gross. But Jesus still saw this as an example, as an opportunity for him to be able to serve the people in front of him. A simple act for him to just bow down and wash his disciples' feet. So even before his greatest act of selfishness, which was, to, which was dying on the cross, Jesus modeled love on a smaller scale 
by washing his disciples' feet. Jesus said something to his disciples later on in this chapter. After he had, um, after he had washed their feet, John 13, 34, 35, it says, A new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. Be By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Jesus, our hero, taught love and care for others, and he modeled it too. See, it's one thing to talk a good game, but it's another to actually back up what you're saying. And when he made this statement about loving one another, by this you will be known as my disciples. By this others will know that you are my disciples. By modeling, by saying that, he had already shown them what true love was going, what looked like on a smaller scale. And after this statement, he was going to show them on a grand scale what true sacrifice, what true love looked like. Simple words, but it carried so much meaning. Jesus looked at the people in front of him and he provided help. He sacrificed and helped them out. I remember when I moved to, uh, to Illinois prior to coming to Texas. I remember uh, God had blessed my family at the time it was my wife and I um, with, uh, with a job that was, um, that was making, we were making more money than, we, than I had ever made before. Uh, living in New York. And so when I got to Illinois, we were blessed to have money uh, where we were, in a sense, um, we weren't spending all of our paycheck. And I remember uh, being at the store one time and I had known the feeling of getting your, your card declined and how embarrassing that was. And I remember going to our local Walmart and, and there was a, a, a mother with her child in front of me buying their weekly groceries and as soon as she went to slide her card, it got declined. And she did it again and it got declined and she did it a third time. It got, you know, even pulled out other cards and they were all getting declined. And, and my heart broke for her because I had been in that situation before. And it wasn't me, it wasn't Carlos. Oh, look how great you are. But it was really the Holy Spirit living inside of me, letting me know, hey, here's an opportunity for you to help someone. And I remember I, it was just an act of kindness, but again, it wasn't me, it was Jesus prompting me to do that. And then again, it, it was, I think it was like 70 or something dollars. So it wasn't a grand amount of money, but again, I wasn't, cha I wasn't saving or changing the world around me, but I was making a difference in that mother's life and in her daughter's life. And so when we go about our days, Jesus isn't calling us to go out and change the entire world all at once. But Jesus wants us to take one day at a time to look at the people around us, whether that's your family, whether that's your neighborhood, whether that's your classmates, whether those are your teammates, the friends that you hang out with, you know their needs. And God has given you the opportunity, the ability to meet those needs. Just like Terrence in Mark's life, he went above and beyond to meet Mark, meet his needs, and make a difference in his life. That's exactly what Jesus is calling us to do, to look at the lives of people around us and looking at their needs and meeting them. Because Jesus made a decision to sacrifice himself and to sacrifice his status, to, wash, to die for his disciples and to wash his disciples' feet. And that love is love that's unconditional. That love is love that makes a difference in the lives of the people around you. We rarely experience unconditional love. Our love is always based on a merit, how much you can do for someone. That if you perform well, the return of that is a paycheck or perhaps, you know, um, acceptance and we go above to try to impress people so that we can feel love, but unconditional love has no merit. Unconditional love is you are loved and cared for because you are. And that unconditional love that we receive from God through Jesus' sacrifice is the same love that we are now called to demonstrate to others. Man, I don't care where you've been. 
I don't care what you look like. I don't care the, the things that you've done, the things that you've struggled with. I don't care the wrongs that you've made in my life. I'm going to love you unconditionally. So what are some key things that we can go out and do right now? Maybe you can be a Terrence in, a, in someone's life. You can go above and beyond, but maybe it's just simple things. You know, smile at someone that's alone. Now, this is not like a creepy thing, all right? So don't, don't think, you know, don't go pick up your next boyfriend or girlfriend that way. But I'm saying just smile at someone that maybe looks like they're alone or maybe they're having a rough day. Or, or, or surprise someone by sitting down or calling them or texting them and finding out, hey, how was your day? How are you doing? And truly listening. Maybe give someone something that they need, a coat, a glove, a pen, maybe some small, something small that will make a huge difference in their life. Or again, just paying attention to the people around you. There are people all over our life that are hurting, that just need someone to listen to them. When was the last time you maybe walked up to a stranger and asked them, hey, how can I pray for you? What is, what is something that, that you just need to get off your chest that I can be a, a soundboard for you? So if I can encourage you in any way as we continue in this justice series of looking at the world around us and how we can provide justice all over this world, four things, awareness. Guys, be aware of your surroundings. God has placed you in those areas for a reason. Be aware of that. Listen. Listen to what people are wanting to say to you. Listen to their body language. Listen to what they're going through. Interpret what they're saying. Sometimes they're not gonna be truthful. There's a lot more behind their words. Go in deep and truly invest in their life. And then the ultimate, the last one, is just be sensitive. You know, sometimes we, we're so quick to jump on other people's perspectives or opinions but we ourselves haven't truly seen their life from their perspective. And so as you look around this world, find out what people are going through, listen to their side, but above all, love them like Jesus loves them. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to be able to sit down and truly look at your, your scripture. And Father, see the sacrifice that you made on the cross on a, on a larger scale, but God, also on a smaller scale, your sacrifice of washing your disciples' feet, that such a small gesture was a huge action to, in a huge way of speaking love to your disciples and to us several thousand years later. And so God, I pray that as we, we listen to this, as we read this passage, that you would, um, you would convict us and challenge us to um, to love unconditional, to, to make sacrifices and to help the people that you've put in our life. And if we don't have people in our life, Father, help us and put us in situations that we will go out and seek those. Father, we love you and we thank you for this time. Amen. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget small groups, 7 p.m. Hope to see you there.